two of these leaders have already been overtaken and given it's early, obviously these numbers are inflated and bound to fall off. But that doesn't mean we can't preoccupy ourselves with these unusual and shocking NBA stats from NBA players early on. Before continuing, only 28% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're not in that percentage, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. The first shocking stat leader in the very early going is John Morant. He's putting up an NBA best 35 points per game albeit in just three outings. Jaws come out hungry after going down in five to the Jazz in round one last spring. Morant's explosive attacks, acrobatic finishes, combined with his polished jumper, has a chance to bring the Grizzlies franchise to new heights this decade. The 22-year-old Morant is clearly a gym rat as he brings a new element to his repertoire every year. He's one of the most intriguing young players in the league and fans in Tennessee are lucky to have him as their franchise player. Before Paul George came out of nowhere, snatching eight steals against Portland to take the early lead away from Caruso last night, Alex would have been the steals champ if the season ended yesterday. Last night to help improve Chicago to 4-0, the bald-headed Mamba had four steals, his third game already where he's posted that stat line. A game before going north of the border to take on the Raps in Chicago against the Pistons, the Caruso posted five steals in a 15-point win for the Bulls. My Raptors gave the Bulls a test last night. I'll be headed to the game against the Pacers tomorrow, but DeRozan and Levine didn't even have a great shooting night, and Chicago still won by three. Caruso's been a big part of Chicago's 7-0 record through the pre and regular season. Even though PG-13 overtook him, Alex is still posting 3.3 steals per game this year, second among all players, just ahead of Jimmy Butler. The third utterly shocking statistical leader in the early going this season is Miles Bridges. He was actually just overtaken by Kevin Durant and Jimmy Butler, but coming into last night, Bridges was leading the league in win shares, evidently with his on-court impact and statistically both with his scoring and advanced numbers. The Hornets wing is having a breakout season in year four of his career. Miles is averaging 25 points and 2.7 steals through three games to go along with eight rebounds in each of those outings. The athletic two-way presence that Bridges has always been is finally molding into a star-esque level that we always knew it was capable of developing into. They don't call Charlotte the new Lob City for no reason. Bridges can poster anybody with monster jams, the Hornets are 3-0, and under coach James Borrego and Mello at PG, they look to be one of this year's breakout teams. Moving on to number four, and Rudy Gobert is not a shocking rebounding leader per se, However, his 20 boards per game is a full five rebounds more than any other rebounding champion in the past decade. Gobert ranked number two in rebounds per game behind Clint Capella last year, and he's been top five in that area in four different years coming into 21-22. It's not the fact that Rudy's number one in board getting that's the shocking part, but it's how he's easily pulling down every ball off the glass right now. With his ridiculous 7'9 wingspan and springy hops, Rudy's known for being the three-time DPOI. While the Frenchman failed to bring that elite defense over to the 2021 postseason, his value during the 82 games, year in, year out, is undeniable. Rudy's known for his rim protection as he became the 2016-17 blocks champ, and in every season other than his rookie year, he's averaged over two blocks per game. When you have a discussion about Gobert's value, his defense is the only thing that you ever bring up. People forget about how elite of a rebounder and screen setter Gobert is, and through Utah's first couple games, Salt Lake City Center has exemplified those qualities. Steph Curry's been featured in three different recent videos of mine over the past week or so, but the Sixers guard Seth Curry's been lighting it up just like his older bro, the younger Curry bro deserves some recognition for shooting a blistering 76.5% from three-point range over three games so far. That leads the NBA, of course, but weirdly, Gorgie Zhang is number two right behind Curry. In addition to that efficiency, Seth's putting up 20 points per night in this baby of a season. Speaking of baby, 
That's what Jared Allen's making the victim of his posters look like. The man's straight up dunking on the entire league right now. He left Mason Plumlee on a poster for the ages right here, ending the last remaining Plumlee brother in the NBA's life. Given Jarrett's strength and hops, there's really no shame for Mason on this homicide. I mean, Allen's such a great athlete for his size. That's helped the newest Cavaliers center to lead the league in field goal percentage, shooting nearly 84% so far. When the Cavs gave this man $100 million, I have to admit, at first, I thought that was a slight overpay. But Allen's living up to every bit of his $20 million cap hit in the Forest City. The Swiss bull Nikola Vucevic has also shockingly led the NBA in defensive win shares. Vuce is protecting the paint like a menace, and his perimeter defense in terms of how he guards the pick and roll, and when he switched on to smaller guards and isos, has been also really valuable. The reason this last early stat leader is so shocking is because before this season, Vucevic was thought of as an offensive big man. We knew he could rebound at an elite rate, but who knew Vucevic could defend like this before he got to Chicago? I guess that just goes to show how much winning can motivate a player. Nikola's past his days of bottom feeding in Orlando, and it's great to see one of our league's most talented stretch bigs getting a chance to be a part of a contending team. His scoring and efficiency fell off a tad, but that's inevitable with all the high volume guards he's playing with. Vooch has committed to protecting the rim and grabbing every board, which is great to see. Many all-stars would complain about losing touches, but the two-time all-star in Vooch is playing the Chris Bosch role in Chi-Town. Let me know the stat on this list that shocked you the most in the comments section. This was D-Flow. You're the best for sticking around, and I'll see you next video.